Hello. Well, I guess we're finally doing it, didn't we? Uh, so this is a video I've been wanting to make for like... I keep saying that, but yeah, I'm trying to make this video for like a few months now. And since yesterday, no, not, not like yesterday, maybe two days ago is my kind of my birthday. You know, it's fun. You know, your, your, your life just decreased by one year officially. Anyways, uh, I've been wanting to make this video for a while now because I think it's an interesting perspective and there's a lot of people with the same story and the same basic perspective I think and it will be helpful for you know for them to hear from someone who got about the same life and the same you know situation why am I putting the mic away same situation as them and <clears throat> you know to to when you're doing something you always look for something you know familiar and i think my story is going to be familiar to everybody as you've seen in the title concept art from the third world country uh and i think it's going to be useful for people from you know from country other than other than the global north right so let's get into the video why am i why am i doing this yeah, I want to tell my story and third world perspective on concept art and I'm aware I'm not the only one once again and I'm not trying to prove anything and I'm not trying to prove shit or you know to fucking fuck my own feathers or what I don't know and just offering point of view um, and who am I I'm, my name is Leo and like the channel name I use I currently work for one pixel brush as a concept artist and also freelancing on the site and I'm currently doing my short film. Oh, by the way, we need to add more intensity to this video. All right, that's better. So I work on one pixel brush. Ah, yeah. <laughs> so work and I live in Indonesia, as you might, as everybody might know, you know, from I keep yammering about it. I live in Indonesia, which is if, as you might, if you, as you Westerners might say, is a third world country. It's a developing country. It's not a, it's not a developed country. Excuse me. Because of that, you know, because of that condition, it's actually harder for people here to pursue art. But you know, don't get me wrong. The local industry is alive and well. But if you want to pursue art, to like, if your aspirations are, <clears throat> you want to do films, you want to do triple A games. Like, it's really hard unless you you know you're privileged in some way and or you have you know you have somebody telling you what to do or you have guidance but the good news is everybody can do that now even with, without privilege and i will get into that later and so yeah not many opportunities in the industry in terms of games and film mostly it's advertising and yeah you can live here with local industry but you know if your aspirations are doing cool films and cool games this might be not you know the ideal situation because the economy is the economy is you know it's growing in my country i'm sure that other third world country also is that term derogatory now by the way third world i don't care i don't give a fuck i'm not offended yeah anyway so because the economy is most likely shit many times a tutorial that costs like fucking 15 bucks feels like a fortune it feels like you're paying for a lamborghini or something and i'm not exaggerating because in the city that I, that I used to live in, in Yogyakarta, it's the minimum wage was I think it was a hundred bucks a month. Imagine like divide that to 30, 30 days for like one people. That's like what? That's like fucking. Is that three dollars a month? Three dollars is a day, right? So yeah, it's that's not a lot. And and that's still not factoring the electricity bills and and all that and because of that it trickles down to you know people tend to you know the parents tend to support a career path that is more promising such as such as you know working in a state-owned company or maybe be a cop or be a soldier that makes art to be seen to be not as viable you know to to be seen like you're wasting your fucking life doing art hey what are you doing yeah you're wasting your life basically that's what they think it's it's changing now because more and more parents are you know aware of this because the industry is growing itself and 
we made good films and good games. But yeah, that's still a fact here. In fact, my, my father still, still, you know, he, I mean, he, he doesn't, he doesn't prevent me from doing it, but he is very skeptical about it until, until I made it into one pixel brush and starting making, you know, good money. Uh, and by the way, thanks Shady for that. And yeah, in the, and in the first world, it's usually art is, you know, well, not all, I, I'm sure not every people experience support from their parents, but I'm sure it's a, it's seen as a more viable career path there. So those are the challenges, right? And yeah, and if you, another challenge is, by the way, before I move on, another challenge is because many Indonesians and many people in the third world country, even in the in Europe, you know, many people doesn't understand English, right? And I'm not sure about another country, but the rate of people who don't understand English here is pretty freaking low. Not to, you know, not to talk shit on them. That's because the situation and the education and stuff like that. But language barrier really, you know, really puts a big hindrance on the progress of many artists here. Uh, that's because, and I'm doing a video to help third world country people with English, the fucking traitor. But anyways, yeah, so that's, that's a big gap. The language gap is because there's not many art resources in Indonesian or in any other other language. I, I'm I'm sure, but most is in English, even the paid ones. So even if you can pay for a tutorial that costs like fucking two hundred dollars, it doesn't guarantee you you're gonna understand it, right? For many people here, so language gap and economy and fucking third world and support, right? And the uh, yeah, so. All that. Uh, what about the positives? The positives of living and working as a concept artist in the third world is it's cheap as fuck. Like, it's fucking cheap. I've said that in the city that I lived in before, the minimum wage was a hundred bucks. Well, that's true because imagine you are making like, imagine you're making like maybe if you're working concept art, maybe you're making three hundred dollars a day. Okay, you're making three hundred dollars a day. That's that three hundred dollars can last a month here in where I live right now near Jakarta. I can feed my whole family with that three hundred. Well, maybe not three hundred, maybe five hundred, six hundred. But you get the point. It's cheap as fuck. And the rent was in the city back then. It was I think it's a two thousand dollars a year with it's a whole house with three bedrooms, two air conditioners, two bathrooms, fucking backyard, and it's a good neighborhood. Right? It's not too far from the city. It's two thousand dollars a month. I mean, come on. It's it's kind of a you know it's kind of a contradiction. But Indonesia is actually a pretty artsy country. We have lots of cultures and art and indigenous stuff, local cultures. But I think the modern world make it you know seem not not as viable. But if you travel to like the more rural areas, it's really artsy. By the way, so there's a lot that you can do with. The local stuff right because people said art is all about perspective so what better perspective than can you get other than your surroundings and Indonesia is pretty artsy surrounding since the industry is still developing there's a chance you can be a pioneer on something so that's that's also a plus I think and you have an outsider point of view and doing work from you know foreign companies because you're not in the global north you can bring something that you know that's from your culture that will cause you know that's different it's, it's a culture shock provided you take from your surroundings okay so that's the positives and negatives and I will I would like to you know tell a story about when I was starting out and how I find out about concept art and stuff if you care if you don't care just skip ahead because I'm telling this because I think this is relevant to the video, but anyways. Ah, so yeah, school. I started, I think I started art, pursuing art seriously since 2013. And I got into an art school, a, a state-owned art school. And yeah, I, I enrolled to the, I think the visual communications program, but, yeah, but, but, but the degree is for fine art, I don't know. I gained access to internet because back at home I don't have internet, believe it or not, in 2013 I don't have internet. And in that school I gained access to steady internet and I found out about Fangzhou, FZD, right? 
and uh, I what is this fucking concept art why he draws so good what he fucking paints landscapes from imagination what the fuck is this guy doing all right so this is that's basically what's going on on my mind and I keep and I, I decided I want to pursue that I want to do that that's really cool and I practice and then I find find out about Machi Kuchara's art cafe and Shadi Safadi and stuff like that and I I would I'd say that Shadi's you know the rule of increasing awesomeness is that was that title I I can remember that really changed my life right that really you know prepares my mind the correct mindset I think in order to make it in this industry or any industry in modern day capitalism for that regard because the the emphasis is you got you need to change you cannot you know you cannot just rely on old proven stuff you you have to be a trailblazer and you know do everything in your power that you can to make a good art because people don't care about the process for the details you can watch that video yourself by the gumroad from shadi and yeah so then until up until up until 2018 until i graduated i basically have you know subpar social life because i paint so much i practice so much because not because i'm diligent on all of that because but because i'm dead afraid i'm afraid that if i graduate i would not have a job because <clears throat> the thing is if i graduate graduate and i don't have a job for like two months or three months or four months straight you know my father is gonna send me to fucking taiwan to be a gardener to support the family because if you don't if, if you don't know don't know this yet you know i was poor as fuck you know well maybe not poor as fuck but lower middle class right so yeah we, we starve sometimes but we can manage but yeah so the plan was if i cannot find an art job you know Maybe soon after I graduate, I was going to be sent to Taiwan and be a gardener to support the family. And I got six people in my family, so that's fun. And yeah, so the magic is in 2018 when I graduate, I apply to this local studio called Polar Engine. That's a really great studio. And I don't expect anything out of it. I, I'm, I'm sure that, yeah, just, you know, nothing to lose. Just send a portfolio they won't accept anyways to match the price they accepted so way before i graduated you know maybe two months before i actually graduated i got a job right so that problem is solved i can pursue art now and polar engine was my you know it's my five-year plan you know at the beginning i was like yeah maybe if i work hard after i graduate five years later i can work at polar engine and now beef before even I graduated, I got a job offer from that very place because that's that's one of the most you know one of the mo one of the best illustration studio in Indonesia. Just for you know reference, that's uh, that's a really good place, and the founder is Lasaido. If you can, if you wanna look at his work, I'll link it below. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, he he was my hero, and he's still my hero, and you know, just. Being able to work and all is fucking amazing. So then I worked there for two years before I quit because honestly I got tired of painting and I know this sounds crazy. I love I used to love painting so much, but I you know I no longer find joy out of it because because it's not fun to me anymore. I I I I, I love three D way more and doing you know fast art and keyframes and animation and stuff like that and to me painting is cool but it doesn't satisfy my need no longer and then so then i quit my job and i was so fucking ready to maybe drive a fucking uber or something to you know find money as long as i don't have to paint because i was that burnt out and then again the same step happened again as then i sent an email to shadi for a few times to you know to ask for a job basically on a one pixel brush he the first few he doesn't reply and then he replied on the fourth third email i think yeah he replied but and he gave some tips said i wasn't good enough and but that gave me courage you know oh 
Shady replied, so that means I'm good enough for him to reply, but not good enough to be hired. And now I got, you know, I got, I got this, what's the verb? Affirmation, you know? By the way, that, by the way, that was before I quit my job. I sent the email to Shady and I quit my job because I'm taking a risk that maybe I can make it into one pixel brush. That's why I quit my old job. And then, yeah, so the fourth email he doesn't reply and finally in the fifth email he immediately hired me right so that and that email I'm, I'm telling you that that email is I'm not kidding here I'm seeing the camera right now that email literally changed my life right uh, working at that old studio I made good money I, I mean it's it's I earned more than many people my age but I gotta support the family of six, remember? And I don't, I don't have a house yet, so I gotta pay their rent, my family's rent, and my rent, and I gotta pay, you know, the lease for my motorcycle because I don't have a motorcycle, and I can't go anywhere without it, so I gotta lease one. My rent, their rent, my food, and their food. There's six people in at home, so you know, I'm, I, I ended up with living on the edge every month because. You know, the money just wasn't enough for everybody. That's maybe enough for one people, but to support the whole family that big and pay everything I just mentioned. It's, you know, it's not impossible, but it's annoying to say the least. So yeah, this sh that email from Shady changed my life because the job that I do, that I do in One Pixel Brush, really you know, close to my heart. I love it so much, even more than painting and you know, in terms of my financial situations, it changed overnight. You know, now I can I can feed my whole family. I can, you know, I can pay my motorcycle. It's finally mine now. It's no longer on lease. And I can do, I can scale up my production. Now I'm doing animation, right? If you can see, I'm doing a short film. That is one part because of Shadi Safadi, because he hired me at One Pixel Brush. And it gave me the means to buy better gear buy everything that i need to buy to make a film so to say that i owe a lot to that guy is a understatement shady if you're watching this i'm yeah i know i'm sucking your dick right now but that's true i owe you a lot by the way i'm i'm so grateful i'm just trying to say that just trying to be sincere here. so yeah so the conclusion is so that's my story the conclusion is maybe some tips right tips if you are also starting from the third world you gotta you know imagine if you are living in indonesia or you know other, other, other third world country if you're people in america who also do does art or in europe who are also making art is your rifle because of the internet right so we're fighting for the same industry now because of the internet. Everybody is one. So they are your rival now. And that can be that is daunting as fuck because it's like it's like a new football club fighting, you know, with Manchester United or something. I don't know about football. That can be daunting because they have all the resource, they have all the privilege, they have all everything they have all the money and the analogy that i like to use is two people might have a different car right one got a lamborghini and one got a fucking prius or something right a cheap car insert any cheap car there people can have that too but their destination is the same they want to get to narnia right so to get to from point a their origin to narnia they need a car and the Lamborghini might de get there faster right but the Prius can also get there albeit slowly you can get there with enough you know if you drive carefully if you drive at the right lane you can get there right so privilege I think privilege is real but it's all about speed and you know how fast you can reach something but of course, there are some situations when you can no longer, you know, achieve anything. But 
I'm saying for people who are like me, who are, you know, lucky enough to be able to climb up. Privilege is all about speed in the end, you know. So don't don't get discouraged because your competitions are from country that are far better than yours. I think that's a plus also because you can learn from them. Just learn fucking English. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah, you can. That's daunting, right? And yeah, internet makes it possible for everybody to make something out of themselves. All they need is, you know, enough ambition and willpower and support and get this luck. You know, you can't get anywhere without luck, right? I believe that people, no matter how successful they are, there are luck present in their success. And no matter how you want to fucking deny or discount it from your story, it's there. You know, I'm, I'm a fucking lucky person. I'm lucky I don't, you know, I'm not born in some country where, where there's war, you know. I live in Indonesia. It's a pretty peaceful country. And yeah, there's that's luck, right? You cannot discount that from your story. And... In this age, if you live in the third world, you don't have to move out. So you can, you know, if you if you if you are able to make it, you can work project from overseas with overseas pay with American or European or anything pay that's better in your country. But you can still live by the standards of your country, which is basically a sultan at this point, right? You're basically living like a king. Uh, yeah. And hone your craft, of course. The next tip is fucking learn, practice, you know, watch everything that you can about your field. And have an internet presence for the love of God. Many people who are really good artists doesn't have internet presence. That's like, that's like a ninja who never uses his moves, right? Or their moves, I should say. That's useless because... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You do good art, but nobody, nobody's seeing that. That's useless. Nobody's hiring you for that. Okay. And because you are on a prius, you have to be two steps ahead of your competition. Not always, but you have to try that. You have to try harder, right? Privilege. Uh, well, also about speed, but and but it's also about how hard you have to try before you make it, right? I mean, Billie Eilish is a good musician, but, you know, rich parents and American and all that. Imagine if the same talent as Billie Eilish, but lives in fucking Zambia or something. Would you think that that person would be as successful as Billie right now with the same talent, same drive, you know, even the same family, you know, if they live in the wrong country, oh, maybe, or maybe not wrong, that's too... That's bad. That's a bad word. Maybe the, not the country that she lives in now. Well, maybe she can achieve the same kind of success, but it's gonna be way harder. You get my point, okay? So yeah, for my folks of the third world, don't get discouraged. If I can do it, then you can do it too. Everybody can do it. The internet is magic. You know, it's the great equalizer. It equ equalizes everybody you know it's no longer and in the third country i i noticed that this is there's this syndrome where you know people tend to think that westerners are better at stuff and <clears throat> not to talk shit about my western friends but we're the same basically we're the same we're just different people with different cultures as all. Well. Yeah, we're all the same. No need to be insecure if you live in a third world country or poor, like I was. You know, you can you can do stuff. You can still do stuff. And if you fail, you know, I'm not I'm not saying that everybody can succeed. That that's a fucking delusion. And if you fail, at least you try. You live with the peace that you tried. You know that you tried your hardest, and you failed. That's sad, but you tried, man. You you are far better than anyone. You know, who never tried, at least, okay? So yeah, I think I'm gonna end that video here. Let's return to a more... I think I'm gonna end that video here, and... I'm sorry if there's anything I've said that might offend anyone or anything. I'm not, I don't mean it. 
and yeah thanks for watching if you made it this far thanks a lot for watching and i also have a patreon it's patreon.com slash art of a i'll link everything below you'll get tutorials you'll get videos you'll get behind the scenes and assets so if you want that you can sign up to my patreon you can see all the tiers here i'm gonna show you the screen and you can choose whatever you like and i'll make i'll, I'll try to make it work your while so yeah that's it for this video i'll see you i see you later thanks